executive director of Contemporary Craft. We're in the exhibition gallery with a special show, Enough Violence, Artists Speak Out. This is a show that we put together in response to a conversation that we had almost four years ago with a gentleman who is a former board member, and he has devoted his life to research on juvenile delinquency and what causes children to get involved in crime, either as perpetrators or victims. He came to us and asked us if we would consider doing a show on violence, and um, it was a little unexpected. Initially, we kind of puzzled about how we could do such a show and where would we find the art. As we began to talk about it, we felt that it was important that we take on the show. We believe that arts organizations not only have an opportunity to build community, but a responsibility to build community. And we know for sure that artists have creative problem-solving skills. They know how to do things very uh, effectively and yet on limited budgets. And this would be an opportunity for the arts to take on a really pressing problem in our community. We um, began to talk about how do we pick the art. We looked at a lot of work and we were concerned that we not put together a show that would just sensationalize the topic. We really wanted to frame it so that it would be a show that was healing and thoughtful and would provide opportunities for people to perhaps express what they had experienced around violence, to have opportunities to heal, uh, to come together in dialogue and begin to think about ways they could work together as a community to solve the problem. And uh, we've really built into the show some wonderful opportunities for that. We've had uh, powerful responses from visitors who have come in and after viewing the artwork have sat down at our solution station where we have art supplies and paper and invite people to write their story or um, post something in response to the problem and uh, just some really amazing experiences that uh, people have shared with us and they found the show a, a healing opportunity. Because we also are very interested in hands-on engagement with the arts, uh, we also have a studio downstairs, a drop-in studio, where every visitor can make their own protective talisman in response to seeing the show. Some of the artists in the show are dealing with the ideas around healing and protection. And so this idea that each person could make a, a personal piece to take with them uh, was something that was central to the planning of the show as well. There are a number of uh, incredible stories in the gallery that you can see here in the art. Uh, I always say that every work of art is an invitation from the artist to have a conversation. And these artists have been very courageous. courageous. They're really stepping forward to talk about things that otherwise many of us might ignore, might prefer not to talk about, might not even know how to put into words. So these works of art tell stories either that the artists have experienced or others that they know of have experienced. Uh, just to give you a few examples, um, Julie Sirak is the artist who has created an entire wall of delicate white women's dresses. I think you can probably see it in the gallery yeah, over my shoulder. Um, it's a, a response to her own experience growing up as a child in a home where there was domestic violence. And she said she learned at the age of seven that she was never allowed to acknowledge what had happened to her what she had seen, there was no one she could speak to about it, and she learned that the only thing she was allowed to do was to stuff these feelings and this fear deep inside. And it was only in her late 20s as an artist, as she was making artwork, that she actually was able to open up and finally get those feelings out and express those emotions. She found herself making these dresses and realized she was dealing with what had happened in her childhood. So she has a wall of delicate dresses and they are a jarring contrast between images of um, innocence in these white dresses and the episodes of violence that have occurred to women and children in the home. And so she's really using the art now to speak out. And she said it's very important that people realize that if they are victims of domestic violence, that they can talk to someone, they can tell their story. There are places where they can go for help and for support. 
and that relates to a lot of the partnerships that we have established in the community around this exhibition. The show will be here through March 22nd, and we really wanted to have a lot of resources for the community. So if visitors come in and find that they have feelings that they want to deal with, that they want to talk to someone. Uh, we have almost 20 partner organizations that are working with us. They have literature here, uh, hotline information, volunteers who are available. Um, it's just been a great experience to connect with them and find out that there really is a, a very broad network of dedicated people working in our community to address the problem of violence. I think um, for many of us, initially you kind of think, what can I do? You know, how can I make a difference? The problem is so big, it's so overwhelming. But in fact, we all can make a difference, and that's what the show is, is really designed to let people know. There are small, concrete steps that each one of us can do to bring up positive change. I think if you look at the artwork uh, that is just over my shoulder, uh, the innocent children who are playing in the gallery and visitors walk in initially and think, oh, how charming. And they look again and then they see that the little boy in the back is holding a gun and the children are raising their arms as if they're being held up. And it really reminds you that children mimic what they see, whether it's on television or whether it's in society around them. And it also makes you think about the fact that we provide toy guns to toddlers at a very young age. So what message are we giving to our children? It really also, to me, is very hopeful because it makes me think that if we really could focus on the youngest generation and begin to make change there, we, we could have an impact over time. Uh, in researching the show, we also found that one of the root causes of violence uh, that was cited again and again in police reports was lack of respect. It's so simple to teach children, to teach one another, to treat others with respect. And the police reports literally said when they asked, why did you shoot this person or how did this fight break out, the comment was, well, he disrespected me or she didn't show respect. So something that simple is a, a cause that we can all take on. Uh, another story in the show that's told by the artwork um, is a work by Beth Barron, and she has created large uh, healing mandalas, large round quilted pieces made of band-aids. And she said she was going through a very difficult experience in her life and had gone out for a walk and was really reflecting on her troubles. And she looked down and she saw a Band-Aid on the ground. And she paused and saw it in a new light. And she picked it up and thought, wow, this, this represents somebody else who's hurting just like I am. It represents a wound or an injury, but it also is a symbol of healing. So she was a fiber artist. She became fascinated by this idea. She put it in her pocket and she began collecting Band-Aids and noticing how many of them there were everywhere she went. And so these large quilted pieces that she makes out of Band-Aids represent the stories of hundreds of people, their injuries, but also their healing and the idea of the community being able to come together to heal. So these are just a few examples of the artists in this show and how they speak so eloquently about how art can make a difference in terms of addressing the problem of violence. I also wanted to mention a, a local artist. Blaine Siegel is the only Pittsburgh artist in the show. There are 14 altogether and some international artists. But Blaine has been working as an artist in residence in Wilkinsburg High School. He moved here from Philadelphia. He specifically asked if he could be placed in residence in an inner city school. And Wilkinsburg High School gave him a space in which to work. He had a studio there. He worked with kids last year uh, with after school programs. And he was startled to find out that Wilkinsburg had been labeled uh, the most violent high school in Pennsylvania. And he said, well, that's not the experience that I've had. I've had wonderful experiences with these kids. And so he wanted to make art that really celebrated all the great things that are happening at the high school in Wilkinsburg and really focused on how the arts could provide positive 
life choices for kids as opposed to having them get involved in uh, a life on the streets. So he is working with the Wilkinsburg High School Band. The band members are going to come here on December 13th and perform. He's working with some of the kids who are writers who are going to be writing in response to the show and, and talking about their work. And uh, he also connected the students with uh, the story of Malala, the young woman who uh, was attacked because of her advocacy for the rights for girls to be educated, and created a video where he's showing images of the students in Wilkinsburg, and then clips of her speaking about the importance of education. So he wanted the kids in that school also to understand that the the uh, cause is a worldwide cause and there are opportunities for, for us to think globally as well as locally. So we've built into the show a lot of opportunities for people to get involved. First of all, we are located in the Strip District at 21st and Smallman in the Produce Terminal Building. It's very accessible. We're free of charge. It's also very informal. And I want to mention also that some people hear the title of the show and they think, oh, I don't know if I want to see a show about violence. But it's a, it's a show that as I said, is designed to be healing. And so I think people having come and experienced it will be very glad that they did. So I mentioned that we have a drop-in studio where families can come. We are free of charge at all times. They can see the show, make art. We have resources for schools. We put together a, a curriculum guide that has a lot of information about the um, the artists who are in the show, the works of art. So for teachers or families, it's a way to use the guide to have some very thoughtful and important conversation with young people about the topic of violence. We also have uh, a little takeaway. We wanted to make sure that, again, everybody would know that there was something simple that they could go away and do. So this is 10 tips to reduce violence. Very simple, concrete steps that are available for all. Uh, we have a website that we've put together, enoughviolence.net is the address, and we invite people to share their stories on the website. We have a catalog online on that website, a lot of information about the programs that we've been doing in the community. Because the show is here through March, we have uh, scientists who are coming in and giving presentations about the research that they've done on ways to reduce violence. We have uh, humanity scholars coming in and speaking about it from uh, perspectives such as uh, Steve Gorlick, who's a professor at Hunter University, who's written about media and the violence media and violence and we also have some performances we have a peace drumming group that's happening the second saturday of every month and our partner organizations are also here passing out literature um, so lots of different ways that people can get involved and um, we are at www.contemporarycraft.org that's our main website and then as i said the enough violence website is enoughviolence.net our phone number is 412-261-7003